Imagine that one day you're walking through a green park. It's a lush oasis in your community where people come to play, to picnic, to enjoy the outdoors and connect with nature. While you are enjoying the park, you look around and notice on the ground by the river, a piece of litter. Where did it come from? Why is it there? And how can you keep people from littering in the future? One way to help answer these questions is to use a systems thinking tool called the systems iceberg. Systems thinking is the practice and reminder that everything we do, say, touch, or decide in this world is connected and interconnected to everything else. If we recognize this and include it in our decision making, we can take actions that support our values and build a more sustainable world. The systems iceberg is a tool that can help us better understand why things happen and discover how we can take action to create powerful change. Think about a real iceberg for a minute. Did you know that typically less than a third of an iceberg is visible above the water surface? That means the majority of an iceberg shape is difficult to figure out. We need to dive below the surface to get a better understanding of what's happening. Just like icebergs in the ocean, a lot of what's happening in our world around us is hidden from our view. In order to effectively observe and understand why the things we see on the news, for instance, are happening, we need to surface these deeper levels of understanding. Plus, the better we understand what's happening, the more able we are to change it to make something new happen. The systems iceberg is broken into four levels. At the topmost layer, we have the events or the things that we can see, the one-off things happening around us on a daily basis. If we wanna create change on the events level, we often react to them to try and create immediate change, though it's often not long-term. Below the surface, there are three unseen levels. The first of these is the patterns level. If we string events together, we can recognize patterns as we begin to see changes or continuity over time. Once we find those patterns, we can try to create change by anticipating what will happen and making a plan to intervene. Patterns are caused by the systems and structures on the layer below. These are the mechanisms, forces, rules, and physical structures in our society that make it work like it does, like the pieces of a computer or the organs of our body, but for our whole communities and society. We can understand systems and structures, then we're able to redesign them in a way that can create patterns that we like and to change patterns that we don't like. Systems and structures often occur because of our mental models, the bottommost layer of this systems iceberg. These mental models are our beliefs, our thoughts, and our values that hold everything else up and shape our worldview. If we can change people's worldviews, we can transform a system to create very powerful change. Let's review this model using our litter in the park example. So one day you see a piece of litter in the park. This is an example of an event, something that you see once. You don't like this litter in the park, so to create change, you react and pick it up. You might even fill a whole trash bag or two with trash that day. You go back to the park often and notice that the amount of litter in the park is increasing over time. This is one example of a pattern that you see. You also notice that it tends to increase more on weekends or after a holiday. Now that you've recognized this pattern of litter increasing over time, you can create change by trying to anticipate this pattern. And you work with friends to volunteer for a weekly cleanup in the park where you come and collect all of this litter and dispose of it. Even though a weekly cleanup is very helpful at preventing litter from accumulating in the park, it doesn't prevent litter in the first place. When you stop to think about this, you realize that there are systems and structures that impact litter in the park. One of these is that there are no trash or recycle bins around the park. So to create change, you work with your friends to write a letter to your local government, maybe your town council, and you lobby them to install recycle and trash bins in the park so people will have somewhere to get rid of their waste. Maybe it's difficult to convince your town council to spend money on bins, or maybe people still litter even when there are trash cans around. You later realize that you could think even more deeply about the litter and consider the mental models that lead to litter. You observe and talk to people and realize that many people think it's not my responsibility to clean up the park. They assume it's someone else's job or that their actions as one person don't make that big of a difference. So to create change, you decide to create some lesson plans on the importance of local nature and avoiding litter that you can share with younger students in your community. You might even work with teachers at your school to go into younger classrooms at your own school. 
You want to share your passion and your knowledge in hopes of convincing younger students to adopt different beliefs that discourage them from littering and create new systems and patterns and behaviors. This is just one of many ways that your thinking might look if you try to explore what's happening in this litter scenario using the iceberg model. When you do this with the iceberg model, it's often helpful to actually write it all out. You can draw your own iceberg or find a template like this, and you can brainstorm what's happening for each of these layers. After you brainstorm what's happening, you can try to identify what your opportunities are to create change by going through and reflecting on your brainstorm. Now you might be thinking mental models level change is the best change because it causes transformational change and has the deepest impact. From one perspective, this is true. The deeper you can target change in the system's iceberg, the more potential you have to create powerful change. On the other hand, the deeper down you go in the iceberg, the bigger the challenge in front of you. It becomes harder and harder to take action. It is much harder to change another person's worldview and deep held beliefs about their responsibility to pick up trash than it is to organize a weekly cleanup. The iceberg model isn't meant to say that some changes are better than others, but it is a way to help you reflect on how your actions might make a difference and when you consider your own unique context, your time, your resources, and your energy, how you should focus your efforts to create the most change possible in your scenario. Whether you want to address litter in your community or another topic completely, the systems iceberg can help you to take a deeper look at why the events in your world are happening around you and your opportunities to make change. How will you use it to deep dive into an issue that you care about?